Hey, welcome back to Advent of Vim. Today is day three. Yesterday we stopped in the middle of covering some of the G commands. Actually, it was kind of a big ram move, so I didn't have to think about a new topic today, right? But fortunately, in the meantime, many of you also suggested some new topics we can cover in one of the following days. But let's just take one step back. If you haven't seen the first two parts of Advent of Vim, I highly recommend watching these again. Also, the hype window is still open at the time of this recording. So if you like and then hype a video, there's some special treatment from YouTube, as far as I understand. So please like and hype, you know, helping each other out in the holiday season, right? Especially in the holiday season, not just in the holiday season, but especially in the holiday season. Okay, so let's switch back to the terminal and get on with the G commands. Today, also, uh, I was suggested that I should enable my keycaster again, and today I didn't forget it. <laughs> so today we're going to have keycasting also. So we stop with a GQ command. GQ IP was our example for that yesterday. So let's see what we're going to do next. So we are going to cover the G capital J command. Let's demonstrate it here. I press capital J and these two lines get joined. There's a space in between here. Let's um, go to center here and then press G, J. And you see these lines get joined without the space in between. Good for a different use case, I guess. Okay, let's jump down to the next thing here. And that's the thing if you don't go uh, according to a script or something like that. This is what we covered already yesterday. We can move with G, J between these wrapped lines here and G, zero to go to the beginning and G, capital, um, dollar sign to go to the end of the line, jump to the end. So just a quick recap of yesterday again. So let's go to the next uh, exercise. And this we didn't already cover. That's uh, what, what I see here right now. Let's jump down seven lines and maybe center this a little bit. And just to remind you, let's run an ls command here to see what we have in this directory here. We have these files, these four files and we can use gf to jump to them because they are referenced here just by name and if i press gf you see i've opened wishlist md here then we can just jump back here go to to another one and gf go file is the thing i've got in my head to remember this so let's go back here and check exercise seven so let's jump to the line with the symbols here go on one of these symbols. And if we press GA, we see on the bottom left here, there's this line with the ASCII code, there's the hex value of this and the octal value of this and the digraph. Let's jump to the next one and do GA again. You see, this is just the next thing in the ASCII table. And actually let's, let's just go outside of Vim here and see if we have like, a man. yeah, there's, there's this man page here. So this is the man page for the ASCII code. And we see here's a little table. We have a table with uh, some, some headings here. Focus on the heading here with decimal that we just saw at, as the first value of GA. So let's search for, uh, I have to escape dollar sign. And you see here in the second column, there you see it's 36. That's exactly the value we saw uh, with GA. The percentage sign has had 37 and also the, the other values there. Let's jump back up here. Um, the other values like hex values for this, you could, could also see in the octal value. Yeah, let's uh, close manual pages again here and go back to the Vim and do it just one more time, GA. And here you can see the decimal value again, the hex value and the octal value of the ASCII character you're on top of with your cursor. Actually, to be honest, I never used this before and I just looked it up in preparation to this video. But yeah, it's it's a G command, okay? It's, it's a G command. So if you have a use case for that, please let me know in the comments. This seems like a good opportunity to practice some really high value skills. Pressing the like button, pressing subscribe, hitting the bell, and of course hitting hype. The hype button is quite new so you have to really practice pressing that that you're gonna get good at that so it's good for both of us for you and for me thank you
Oh, and I forgot, memberships are also available, of course. Okay, next exercise, search and replace with GN. So let's search for gift here. And if we now press GN, you see we actually visually select the thing we searched for. By the way, I also made another video about this already that goes over this in a little bit more detail. But the cool thing you can do actually is use CGN for change the next uh, visually selected thing you search for. And then you can repeat this with the dot. So we already did just a GN and marked this visually. So we just have to press C now and can, what should we replace it with present? Uh, press present here and press escape to get out of this. If we now do CGN, we jump to the next occurrence of the word gift and already selected it. And we can just type present again here and uh, press escape. And now we can also do just the dot to repeat the last action. So take a look at this gift here. If we now press just dot, you see this got replaced by present. And we can just hit dot, 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 dot to actually do this. Uh, but there's another thing. Let's just undo that a few times here and uh, enable HL search. So highlight search. If you have this enabled, you see which words are there that are selected and will be replaced uh, quite easily. So HL search makes this little trick a little bit nicer, I think. If I want to use this, I would enable HL search before that. So GV, this is really cool. If you press GV, you reselect the last selection you had visually selected. That was a mouthful. So let's try this out. So let's just hit GV and see what happens. You see, this is the actual visual selection we had with the CGN before, because there was gift before we replaced this with CGN. And that's why we only uh, marked up have the present now. So let's maybe uh, select something else visually and uh, like, like this and um, go off with escape here and uh, go jump somewhere else and then just press GV and you're back at the last selection you made. Can be useful in many situations. Okay, let's exit this again. And let's look at this exercise here. To demonstrate this, let's make a few changes here somewhere. Let's just delete this word, maybe, maybe add something here, like you all are great because you're watching this. Oh, I can't spell sometimes or type. Let's just insert. Yeah, yes here. And then maybe jump around here and delete this word. So you get the idea. We made some changes and now we can use G semicolon to navigate back through the change list, actually. So we don't undo the changes, but we jump to the positions where we change stuff. Also, we can do this the other way around. So in the other direction with G comma, you jump further down your change list again. Now we're at the end of the change list and that's why we can't jump any further. So let's go slightly off script here again. And I didn't prepare any more G commands here, but I just remembered that I came across a video of Sylvan Franklin lately where I learned about a new G command. At least it was a G command I didn't know before. And yeah, let's just prepare this line here a little bit for this. Uh, yeah, let's duplicate make here just for the sake of it and then duplicate this line a little bit. Uh, not the prettiest side here, but <laughs> okay, let's, let's go with this. So you're at this line and you, you're thinking, okay, I, I need to replace make with take or something like that. You go into command mode and then you press S for substitute and make because you want to change this. Take, we use a global command that it happens in, in, the, in the whole line or in the whole file, you think, at least, and hit enter. Now you see, oh, it only took place here in this line because what, what did I miss? Uh, let's, let's see what we did here. Oh, we forgot that we should have put in a range here or not even a range, but you, you wanted to probably use the whole buffer here as, as the range, right? So let's enter this command here. And this was, was actually what we wanted to have, but we didn't. So let's undo what I did here again. 
You see, this was a little bit complicated to change this line again. I, I had to open up the the um, command window thingy that you can edit that I, I just forgot the name of with um, if you're in command mode, you can enter this with control F or if you're in normal mode, you can press Q and colon. This was uh, not a G command, but just a quick uh, tip here for you again. This can be useful very often, but that's not what I wanted to show you. So let's close this again. But the command was G ampersand. This actually takes your last substitution and puts it or applies it to the whole buffer you're in. So this is really, really much, much easier than go into your last line, edit this and do this somehow. So just G ampersand and you're done with it. So shout out to Sylvan for this one. Probably he came across this when he read the whole manual, I guess. I still have to do that. <laughs> so let's wrap it up for today. I already told you all the good things you probably already done. I hope that you'll be here tomorrow for the next episode. I'm not sure what the next episode will be yet, but we'll see. It's, it's a little surprise. So thanks again for watching. See you around and take care. And happy pre-Christmas season. Yeah.